Welcome to Spotlight ETSU. I'm your host, Carrie Oliveira. Today we'll be speaking with Kathleen Moore, the Director of Sustainability on Campus. Her department works to promote energy efficiency, recycling, and other green initiatives. Thank you for joining us, Kathleen. I'm happy to be here. Thank tell you. Us, tell us something about where you come from and how it is that you ended up at ETSU. Well, I've been here at ETSU for almost 19 years. Uh, my background, actually, I have a degree in um, ornamental horticulture and landscape design. And I was hired as the campus's first horticulturist. So I didn't I've, know we ever had a horticulturist. We did. Um, I'm the one and only one. And we, um, I've probably planted over 400 trees on the, on the campus with help from my staff. All right, so when I walk on campus and all the little trees with the labels on them, you had something to do with that? Absolutely. Oh, it's that's so cool. And we've had you know, the conifer garden, flowers on campus, many different things like that. So a couple of years ago, I was. Um, I kept on pushing the administration saying we need to look at our sustainability initiatives on the campus mm -hmm. because we were, we were falling behind and I knew we were doing a lot of great things but we didn't have an office that really worked to, um, to, to go with the curriculum and the research and just working with students on ways to explain to them about how to decrease their carbon footprint and right. other things. And so I guess because I was the loudest speaker about <laughs> that, they asked me if I'd be willing to forego some of my horticulture work and work more with sustainability. And now it's gotten to the point where probably I'm only spending 10% of my time or less on the horticulture, horticulture and the rest of it, the sustainability part has really taken off. So can you tell me exactly what the word sustainability means? Because, you know, I, I have students who take classes like on, in sustainability in the business department, and I only think I have a fuzzy idea of what that is and it might not just be me. So. Well, there are a lot of different definitions, and I could spout off ones from the Brunton Commission and other things, but basically it's just really just using what you need now and preserving for future generations. Okay. So it's really, you know, it's conserving. It's not saying, you know, no, you can't do something, but just being aware of that we need to make sure that we, that we save the earth and, and our resources for future generations. Just so. sort of a conscientious use of resources. Absolutely. Absolutely. That makes sense. And so mm -hmm. what are we doing on the ETSU campus that is promoting our sustainability? As oh an organization, I mean, <laughs> I, universities are enormous organizations. Absolutely. And they're complex and there are numerous levels of hierarchy or whatever else. And so I imagine that trying to get everybody at the university sort of on board and participating in sustainability would be a daunting task to say the least. It absolutely is. And so how are we sort of addressing that? And there have been a, a couple of activities which we'll kind of talk about here in a moment, but sort of big picture wise, what are we doing on campus? So. Well, big picture right now, we are um, undergoing an initiative called STARS, mm -hmm. and it's through ACI, which is the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Ed, a big um, acronym. But basically, they have this program called STARS, and it looks at the entire campus from curriculum to research, operations, um, recycling, water use, I mean, all different types of things. And we had to measure it, and that's the way we can really manage it if we measure it. Right. And so we have seven uh, large working committees with faculty, staff, and students involved um, with administrators to look at where we are at ETSU mm -hmm. and how we can improve. And so we're right in the middle of this um, as, as part of our strategic plan yes. that by 2014 we will submit for a rating from this, from this organization to see where we stand against other schools, but mostly give us a benchmark and a, and a plan for the future. So, so do we have any idea currently where we stand? I mean, if this is the first sort of university-wide sort of assessment of our sustainability, do we have any sense of how we're doing? With well, we did a baseline actually in, in 2010 and we received a bronze rating. And so our hope is that we will receive a silver rating um, by 2014. Is there anything less than a bronze rating? Or does yes, there's a reporter rating, which is for schools that have, once they've done the assessment, they realize that they aren't We've up been, to par. We are not sustainable at all. Yeah. We're just using everything. <laughs> or if they just don't want to publicly report, because right. that's the other thing. All this is very open to the public. Anyone can go on their site and they can see what each of these schools is doing. And so there are over 270 schools that have sub submitted for ratings. Mm -hmm. um, the highest rating is platinum. I, I will say that we're not going to be platinum. <laughs> um, we will definitely be silver unless something strange happens, but I'm hoping that we'll get, go for the gold and that's what we're really hoping to do. That so, would be outstanding. And, and again, the whole idea is not really to get that medal. I right. mean, it, it's, it's something to say, oh yes, we're a gold rated school, but more it, the the main reason for this is to change the culture of sustainability to really have people talking about in classrooms in their residence halls um, people really being active in many different activities so so if it's certainly clear to me that having an orientation towards sustainability is good for the earth yes how is it good for the university well for one thing it'll save us a lot of money possibly how's I mean, that 
Well, any energy that we're not using, we're not we're not paying, paying for. for. <laughs> so certainly, <laughs> it's the same thing for every ton of things that we recycle. Instead of taking it to the landfill, we're saving landfill charges. So if you right. look at that, just from the economic um, yes. part of it, we're, we have a potential to save a lot of money that way. But the other thing is, you know, our main goal here is to educate the next generation, yes. and that really is if we can can get a student here, get them involved, and get to start thinking about their own personal carbon footprint, or mm. maybe even uh, have them go toward a uh, a job that actually deals with these things that we that we are dealing with in our world, then we've done our part. So that's the main thing for me is to just engage students, faculty, and staff, and have them thinking about what they personally can do. So. That's that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. So um, uh, was it a couple weeks ago? There was this plastic bag monster. Yes, our bag monster. Running around on <laughs> campus, and that had something to do with your office. Yes. Tell me about what that whole thing was about. Well, this started last year. We um, viewed a movie, or we, we showed a movie called, um, uh, goodness. Bags. Bags. Bag right? it, excuse me, bag it. Bag it. <laughs> and we had, we had the director and the actor come, to the, to, come to, the, um, to the university, and he talked about the fact that plastic permeates our society. I mean, it's everywhere, and plastic is... I mean, I love plastic. I find it to be terribly useful. It is very useful. Daily. However, <laughs> it doesn't go away. Right. And what happens is it breaks down. It may degrade, but it breaks down, but it never goes away in the environment. And so we were talking about what are some things that we use on a daily basis where we can maybe get away from that plastic mm -hmm. and, and not make it a hardship on people. Right. And so... Um, we decided to make this bag monster, and what he represents is 600 plastic bags are affixed to this track outfit that's underneath, and it's, that's the average number of bags that each American citizen uses per year. One American, one yes. American person uses 600 bags a year on average. That's correct, plastic bags, those disposable bags you get from the grocery store. I would store. really like to disagree with you, but I'm not sure I could. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if you go to Kroger's or whatever, you, you, you come like, back with 20 right there. Yeah, exactly. So, um, especially for me, I have two teenagers, so yes. I mean sometimes um, it's 30. You're so. shopping forever. <laughs> yes, that's correct. So um, there's a way that just by doing a simple thing about having reusable bags and taking them in there, um, at many stores you get credit for them now. You'll get yes. five, five cents credit or it goes to a charity of your choice. So just, just removing that plastic can make a big difference. Um, so that's, that's, what, that's what the bag monster is about. That and we also have started a program to help people that have these bags. Yes to get rid of those bags in a responsible way. Right. Once they go to the landfill, again, they do not degrade. Let's, so. can, can we talk about that just a sure. little bit? I mean, you said that they break down, but they don't go away from the environment. So like, what exactly is happening if a, a plastic bag degrades, but it isn't actually going anywhere? What is it doing then to the environment? It, it breaks down into its chemical components. Okay. And so it permeates the soil. It gets into our waterways. And if you've ever heard about the great um, Pacific garbage patch that's out in the ocean, yes. so um, it's unbelievable. All those little bits of plastic that are microscopic, that are animals, that are you know, it, our sea animals yes. are actually eating, and they're getting into their systems. And so it just never goes away. It, it isn't something where it can be composted. Right, so, so when you think about it that way, like one plastic bag goes on forever and ever Absolutely. and totally affects Versus forever. Absolutely. The, the we may not see it, right? but, but it's it's still, it is still there. Which is something I never thought about because, boy so. golly, do I love plastic bags. I think I like them a little bit less now. So, for <laughs> well, whatever that's worth. Of, <laughs> now, there are a lot more environmentally um, friendly plastics that are out there. Mm -hmm. But, again, nothing ever goes away. Right. Um, I mean, Yes. Except for our fruits and vegetables and things like that, that can be composted. Compost but really, they don't. They go back into the soil, so it doesn't ever go away. It's that conservation big of matter. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so the plastic bag thing. So aside from the um, promoting reusable bags, yes, we have another program on campus. We do. To bags. We just started it this year, and it's going gangbusters. <laughs> it's um, bags to benches, and it's a program sponsored by Trex Company, and mm -hmm. they're the company that makes the plastic lumber that's supposed to be 50 years. That you know, there's never any warping, there's never any problem with it. So they've initiated this program for for higher ed and for K through 12 schools, where basically, if you collect 50,000 bags, they will send you a bench that's made out of this plastic lumber. So we've already collected over 50,000 bags. And, and in we what are, span of time has that 50,000 bags been um, collected? From October. From October. <laughs> so, now, granted, it isn't just from our university people on, uh, on campus. Right. We have people from the community that bring their bags to us also. Oh, excellent. So, and I know that there was a campaign the Bags to Benches campaign that was going on and people were um, encouraged to bring their bags on campus. So is there a way for me to like bring my bags on campus on an ongoing basis? Absolutely. We have um, over, we have 14 boxes on campus. We have one in the lobby of every residence hall. Okay. 
Uh, we also have um, two of them in the Culp Center and one in the library. And we have one in the CPA. And also, we gladly accept it at our recycling center. Oh, so, very um, good. Bring those bags. We're, bring them. More them. benches. <laughs> but the best thing is not to have them at all. Not to put them in the But don't leave them in that cupboard. If you, you know. have them, bring them in. We'll get a bench. That's a good thing. Absolutely. You mentioned the CPA just now. Um, I know that you know the the addition that they're building on to the CPA. Mm -hmm. I think that we're trying to have a more sustainable orientation towards the construction of that section. That's I know that we have solar panels going up and or well, there are a couple of things with that. Um, the Tennessee Border Regions for any new construction or any major renovations mm -hmm. additions, we have to follow the U.S. Green Building Council's um, Silver Lead Guidelines. So it's a build, it's a set, set of sustainable building guidelines. Okay. So we are building that addition with those guidelines in mind. So it, we already look at conservation and you know energy use, water use, uh, whenever we do any new building on campus. Right. But um, in addition to that. Um, we are, you know, of course, looking at energy, energy efficiency throughout the whole building. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at um, our lighting load because there's a lot of lights in that building. And Const that building is used constantly. constantly. So we, um, as part of our student uh, campus sustainability fee on campus, our committee has decided to allocate $100,000 of student fees okay. from that fund to actually put in a passive solar wall, which will help us with heating the building Yes, and also um, alleviate some of that energy load for the lighting in the building. So we are in the process right now of getting that all together, getting mm -hmm. the specifications, but we will have solar panels up on top of that building. That's so, so excited. cool. <laughs> it's our first large scale um, solar project on the campus. I know back home, I'm from Hawaii originally, mm -hmm. and um, my parents have been debating having the, the solar panels placed on, on their home. And part of the benefit to doing so is, I mean, there's a tax credit for homeowners who do Absolutely. such a thing. But also, if, their energy production exceeds their use, the energy company will actually pay them for their surplus. Is that something that economically might benefit the university? I don't know if we have an arrangement like that with like JCPB or whatever the case may be. We do, we can sell it back. We can actually produce that power and then sell it back on the grid. Mm. We've decided that um, economically it makes more sense for us to actually just reduce our use that at, at that point. There's a lot, um, to, it has a lot to do with peak demand on the campus and yeah. how, what we're charged per kilowatt hour. Um, we don't get all those great tax benefits because no. we're a state entity. Indeed. Um, so there's a little bit longer payback, but this is the right thing for us to do. So I think we're that doing makes it. sense. I, I yeah. feel like in my notes I had something about um, eco treadmills. Yes. What's an eco treadmill? <laughs> an eco treadmill, if you use one, it actually is a very good workout, I will say that. It is a treadmill that is not hooked up to any, to any electricity. So basically, it is your own well, it, your own motion. Well, it's not going to help me then if it's not <laughs> yes, up to anything. <laughs> no, it is your own motion that actually moves this machine. Ah! And it is an excellent workout. Get on there for five or ten minutes and you are sweating um, much more than the regular treadmill. And so, so again, a move to decrease the energy expenditure absolutely. in the CPA. I've also noticed that in the CPA, and I've seen them also in Sam Wilson, we have new water dispensers in, yes. in lieu of the water fountains that were ever previously there. Yes. And so tell me about why we've moved to those. Well, they're not energy saving, but that isn't the, the idea there. The right. idea there is to actually decrease our use of plastic bottles. It goes back to that plastic. Those right. are most of the time single use bottles. Mm -hmm. So we have been hosting hydration station um, celebrations um, on the campus. We've um, installed about 10 or 12 of, of the hydration stations all around campus. Yeah. And it's just to encourage people, first of all, to drink water, yes. to drink tap water. There's no sense in buying bottled water. It's all the same stuff, is it, it not? It, it actually, the city water is more heavily regulated than the water that you get out of the other out of the bottled water, believe it or not. I'm learning so much right so now. So it's, it's <laughs> filtered, it's cleaner. Uh, we know what's in it. Yes. Um, and so it's to, to help students reduce their reduce their cost. I mean, buying bottled water is expensive. It's expensive, yes. But also to encourage them to drink tap water and then to use those reusable water containers. containers. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I mean, because I've noticed too that um, the quality of water bottles, like store-bought water bottles, is they've gotten thinner and crunchier. It almost says, please throw me away when you're done with it. Where you know more sturdy, like the smart water bottles, for example, are sturdy. And you Definitely. Think, I could. I could reuse this bottle, but you know the cheap, like under a dollar a bottle. And what we're finding, and what what the research shows, if you use those um, disposable water bottles or mm -hmm. the plastic water bottles, anytime they're hit by UV light, they degrade, and so the plastic chemicals that are in the plastic seeps into my water. Seeps into your water, so you don't want to drink that. So better off to have. 
um, a BPA free, so you know, a, a nice Nalgene bottle. Yes. Or we've been giving away stainless steel or yeah. aluminum bottles. Um, because again, you don't have any of that leaching into your water. Who have you been giving away bottles to? How do I get one? Well, we've, we have a program right now called Get Caught Green Handed. So if we catch you doing something good, we have actually these bottles we're giving away. Um, we also have them, again, um, we'll be having an event at the, at the CPA mm -hmm. during um, Earth Month, which is, in, which is in April. We'll be giving bottles away there. Now, students, I will say that they um, have a great opportunity if they decide to um, get a green room certification. What is this? Which means if they live in a residence hall room and they, there's a checklist that's available for many of the Econuts or mm -hmm. on our website, they go through and they indicate that they've done 20 green behaviors that are on this list out of the 32 that are on there. Okay. And it's certified by their Econut, then we give them a wonderful prize package and include it in there as one of those water bottles. I want prizes. I yeah, know. <laughs> There's also a so. great power strip that we have in there. Um, it's a smart power strip, which will help. They can use um, for their computer, their telephone, their game system, whatever it is, and it helps reduce power usage. And it also is a surge protector. And we have. Um, stickers and pins and there's also a really cool bag um, a tote bag that they have that all this comes which in. I could use when I go grocery shopping absolutely <laughs> so well, okay let's suppose I don't live in a residence hall yes because I don't I don't know what's on the list so I don't know what the criteria for a green room are but I would maybe like to do some of these things in my home so what are some of the things on the list that are easy to do or that would have the biggest impact on reducing my carbon footprint okay when you wash your clothes yes you, um, unless you absolutely have to put it on a warm setting or hot, you use cold water when you're washing your clothes. Okay. How's that? That's one of the things, that they wash clothes um, in a cold that. setting. Yay! Yay! You use environmentally friendly um, detergents that don't have any phosphates in them. Oh, is that something that, like, on the packaging they say phosphate free, or do I have to look at the ingredient list and They'll see? They'll say if... phosphate free on it. Okay. Um, What's a phosphate exactly? It is a sudsing agent, but it gets into our water and causes problems with water quality. Ew. Yes. The so. tap water I should be drinking. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm going to keep the phosphates out um, of my drinking water. Do you recycle at home? I do not. Well, that would be one thing that's definitely on there. Do you recycle things? Do you use re reusable bags when you go to the grocery store? I'm going to start. Yes. I will say I've been absolutely persuaded by this conversation. <laughs> I'm freaked out about the bags. <laughs> when you, when we, on this checklist, there are things like when you purchase things for your, you know, food or whatever it is, mm -hmm. do you look for things that have minimal packaging? So That's not anything I'm even conscientious of. All right. Like how much packaging is on a product? Ap very important. How do I know whether something is unnecessarily or excessively packaged? Well, when you have, let's say, a jump drive and it's you know so big, and then you've got a package that's like this, like this. seventeen times well, bigger. Well, is there thing. is there a reason to do that? No, I mean, they would be that all. would be an example. So you look for minimally packaged things. Ah, oh, um, I can do that. Or do you upcycle things? Or do you? Uh, what's upcycling? Upcycling means that or reusing things. So, for instance, um, you have an item. I don't know, a broken coffee cup. This is probably not the best example, but you know, maybe instead of throwing that away, you find some other way to do that. You use a mosaic. You make a mosaic at it, or you use it as something in the bottom of a plant, or you know, whatever. Right. Um, do you um, t-shirts? You know, do you use them to make into something else if you don't want that t-shirt anymore, or do you donate it to to a good cause? So ah. you upcycle it. Okay. Because recycling normally means that it's more of a down cycle kind of a thing. It goes from a plastic bottle into another product right. farther on down the line. Right. Upcycle means that it's reused or it's, it's, it's re, it has another purpose. Repurpose would be another name Repurposing. for it. Repurposing. Yes. Okay, I like that. So there are some really cute things I've seen lately of things to do with t-shirts to make. Um, do tell. Purses. T-shirt um, purses? Kind of cutting up your t-shirt and making it into a really nice um, decorative kind of uh, um, a shirt. Um, making pillows out of them. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different so things you can do. Bags. You can do. Yeah, you I know can... that in the Office of Student Affairs, they have a giant quilt made out of a variety of their previous, I mean, they print a t-shirt for everything, uh, right? And right. so... Like they have a giant quilt on the wall of t-shirts. And I'm like, you could you right. know, start turning these things into like mementos or whatever else instead of just like chucking them off. Another example is to make plarn. Plarn? Plarn, no. plastic yarn. Oh. So um, <laughs> this is kind of an unusual one, but those plastic bags that you have at home, you can actually make yarn out of those and cut them up into strips, tie them together and crochet them and make rugs and other things, bags to take the store, whatever. How does one do this? Very easily. You can go on YouTube and you can see how to do it. <laughs> so, so, and we also have workshops and things that we show. We, we have a lot of different things. We're crafting um, nights on the campus. I didn't know this. Well, I didn't know. Okay, so the Office of Sustainability, <laughs> yes. 
Well, teach me how to make plarn. We plarn. can if people want to learn how. Plarn. 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 I would like to learn how to do that. Plastic I crochet, yarn. you know, like pot scrubbers for dishes, there and I go. imagine that plastic. It, does it feel like yarn? Does it feel like plastic? No, it feels like plastic, but it's... Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I must learn how to do this. I will show you. So, <laughs> how might a person, a faculty, a student on this campus, become more aware of what all is going on with respect to sustainability? I know there's the EcoNuts, which is what, basically a student organization, an environmentally conscious student organization. Is that what it is? or it, It's both. It's actually students that we hire. We have, we have 12 students that we've hired, and they're one in each residence hall okay. to help promote sustainable initiatives uh, on the campus. But then we also have a student organization which is a part of that so okay. they're, they're part of that um, they can they can come to that and that's basically for students but right. anyone anyone is invited we have um, activities all the time now next month April will be a good opportunity for people to get involved tell me about what's happening next month during April well um, April 22nd is Earth Month and instead of just selling excuse me April Earth 22nd Earth Day, day Instead of celebrating just that one day, we celebrate the whole month at ETSU. We always do it big here. And so we do it up. We have right now, as of yesterday, we have 20 events scheduled in April. Where That's anyone, like basically the whole month. I know. That's so some cool. Some days we have two events. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to get some sleep beforehand. But anyway, so we have so many things that we're planning. Uh, now, we are partnering with many other organizations. Right. There's a student group on campus called the Environmental Conservation Organization, or ECO. Uh -huh. And they're hosting a lot of the events. Um, student Affairs is hosting some events. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we, we partner with all of them. Mary right. Martin School of the Arts. But there are at least 20 now, um, four different movies that will be showing. We have guest speakers coming in. There's all kinds of different things. So um, we're very excited. And it all culminates basically on the 22nd, which, which is Earth Day. And what's going to be the big Earth Day thing? Do we know? Is there going to be like a big plastic-free celebration? or? Well, it will be um, in depending on the weather, but it's scheduled to be in Borchuk Plaza in front of the library. Uh -huh. And we typically have organizations from out the community that have an environmental um, bend to them yeah. that come and they display and try to get students, faculty, and staff engaged and educated. So that will be the same. But part of that is we're going to have um, some service-related um, events because we really would like people instead of just coming and experiencing that to actually get involved in their hands in service and really yes. because that's really how you learn well not only that I think that that creates investment as well right so if I engage in an activity and I figure out I, this is easy and it's not time consuming or whatever right. else I can persist in this and then right. you have people who are working on a regular basis towards right. moving us towards sustainable well, in April, we have quite a few of those types of events. We have two creek cleanups that we are sponsoring. Um, we've adopted Brush Creek, which is right across the state of Franklin Road. So we'll be going in the creek and pulling out all those plastic bottles and the tires and the things that people discard without even thinking about what it's doing to our water quality right. or to the wildlife there. Um, we have uh, a woods cleanup day where we're actually a whole week of woods appreciation um, week activities. Woods appreciation? Yes, for our university woods, we have a great uh, a great thing here on the campus, our University Woods, where you can hike, bike, we'll go out and look at the trees, whatever you want to do out there. Where are the woods on campus? <laughs> I, I will say I've missed them. I drive on campus and I've never noticed woods. Well, if you're driving on Southwest Avenue yes. underneath the railroad trestle, yes. you look left or right, yes. you're right there are the woods. So that's, that's the woods. I always ignore them. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't need to ignore them. No, <laughs> anyway. I don't. And, and really what I'm finding out of is, I'm realizing about myself anyway, is that maybe being eco-friendly is largely about awareness yes which i tend to be oblivious it seems like i take for, like we take the earth for granted right it is the place where we live and right. it's supposed to do for me which is well that's a terrible attitude i will say this you're not alone <laughs> we have over 400 recycling containers on the campus in our buildings and if you've been in any building you've seen them if you haven't been oblivious that's true but every semester i'll have students say you know i wish we put recycling on the campus i wish we recycled i'm like we do but actually we do we do a lot. Yeah. we recycled over 400 tons of materials last 400 year. 400 tons yes 400 tons does this include the like recycle the electronics day or is no. that just like that's just plastic plastic and paper and bottles <gasps> aluminum um cans uh, um, metal cans things like that cardboard that's a big deal and that's we could do deal. better than that yes i didn't i'm not counting the things that we recycle as far as our leaves and all of our brush from the campus and and the tires and the oil and the things that we that we have to recycle right but no this is just stuff that people put into those recycling bins 400 tons wow That's wow hot. wow so we're doing a great job That's... but we're still only about 20 percent of our waste are we recycling so we need everybody that is producing waste on the campus and everybody produces waste everybody does to really be aware that we need to increase that instead of just throwing it to the landfill yeah it goes to the landfill we need to we need to reduce 
and then re, uh, reduce, reuse, and then recycle. What was the word you used? Repurpose. Repurpose. I like That's repurposing. Right. <laughs> anyway, back to Earth Month. Yes. So you were talking about something, and I got excited, and I interrupted you, That's and okay. I don't remember what it was now. Oh, the oh, woods. Oh, the service. Yes, University yes. Woods. So we'll have a University Woods um, a cleanup day, actually going through the woods and helping us remove litter and re remove brush from the, uh, from the trails, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, on April the 12th, we're going to have a, a campus beautification event. Uh, Dr. Nolan will be participating, and it'll be in the afternoon. It's faculty, staff, and students are invited to come out and help us put mulch, flowers out, pick up litter, those types of things. So that's April the 12th in the and, afternoon. And how does a person get involved in something? Do they just show up or do they have to sign up? They'll or? have to sign up through volunteer services. Okay. Um, over in the Culp Center at the Sork and they can sign the up. Source. The Source. The yes. Source. <laughs> the Sork. And um, they, can, um, they can sign up there and there'll be some notices going on about that. Okay. And so um, we have, goodness, so many different events that we, we have going on. So it's just, um, and they just need to go to our website and look, or to go on the Planet um, site and look at the different events. What's your website? It's gogreen.etsu.edu. Go gogreen.etsu.edu. That is correct. That's not hard to remember. No, go green. Just remember that. If I, so. go, if I go to, like, <laughs> if I use the A to Z index in the search, how, yes. what, what go green. Go green. That's not hard. Not We're at all. There. You guys are going to be showing the Lorax or something, too. Yes, the April the 9th. April the 9th, we yes. think. No, it is. April the 9th. We know for sure. We know for sure it is the 9th. And it's going to be the amphitheater. It will be. That's and cool. We'll have refreshments there, and we're, we're very excited. So. Oh, that'll be so much fun. And the buck funds, um, student funds are paying for that. Yes, so, um, so they might as well. We want the students, families, bring everybody out. La Ta talking about funding, in the last couple minutes we have here, the students regularly ask you about the sustainability fee, yes, right? So they do. I, I don't know how much that is, for how much are students <clears throat> paying semesterly for the sustainability fee? They are paying $5 per semester, so a whole $10 a year. But that generates about $135,000. I mean, as per student, that's, I mean, humongous at the end of the day. But I'm, so uh, That's a coffee, but, you know, it, at Starbucks. <laughs> one. <laughs> one, it's coffee. one coffee. So we, you already talked about sort of the things that they're doing with the CPA, with the solar panels, whatever mm -hmm. else. And so the money is partly coming out of that. What else, what other kinds of things can students see that funding going to? Pretty much a, quite a bit of our recycling center okay. um, did that. We've purchased some electric vehicles um, with that with that money. Like the one that our department has? The, the little ghost we call the little white electric vehicle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, that's... I'm trying to figure out how to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they're great. We've had ours for quite a while and we love it. Um, golly, there, there are so many different things. Um, the Buck Bikes program. I was just going to ask you about that. Yes. I don't know if people know about this program. I can rent a bike. You I can, can rent a bike for the day, for the semester, for the week. And they are wonderful Schwinn bikes. They are beautiful bikes. Um, they are available at the CPA. And we also have the Yellow Bike Program. Yes. Which um, is, uh, there's no charge for those bikes. Right. And they're bikes that have been donated to us. Yes. We fixed them up. And um, you can go to the CPA and rent those. And we see them all over Johnson City. And they are, they're a great resource. And the reason we did this is to, for many, many reasons, mm -hmm. health reasons, but mainly it's to help students that don't have a vehicle here get to get around. around or people that do have a vehicle to, to use an alternative form of transportation right. that is more environmentally friendly. It's much easier to walk or to ride your bike on this campus than it is to the drive. The parking. <laughs> if you go and you get a bike from the CPA, you do not have to park. And there, we have put in, uh, with the student fees, we have put in um, bicycle racks all over the place. And bicycle repair this. stations, too. So we bicycle have, repair stations? We have four bicycle repair stations we've put in with the student fee. And basically, they, they are um, where you can go and get air for your tire. There's a wrench set. There's things that you can do um, with that little repair station. There's even a place where you can put your bike up so it's easier for you to work on the wheels. And, and can we like find that. details about how to access all these things on y'all's website? The, you would probably, for the buck bikes, the better way to go is through the CPA. CPA. Uh, because they are, it's really, they, they are the holder of that, of that information. And, and right. they, they basically have the staff that takes care of it. So they have the bike clinics there. Uh, yes. We built a little bike shed that's back behind it uh, where all the bikes are too. This so. has been so informative and I'm so <laughs> excited to have been able to talk to you. I've learned a lot. I hope our audience has well has as well. I um, hope so. We've been speaking with Kathleen Moore about her work with sustainability and recycling on campus. Join us next time on Spotlight ETSU. Great. Okay.